Hello, this is a tutorial on the new particle texture coordinates. Uh, to save some time, I've already created a particle system. It's a, quite a simple one. Some particles being born, and then there's a turbulence effector creating some variation to the movement. So, let's see, this is how it looks now, rendered. So there's basically no color, it's the basic uh, halo texture. So now let's first try to uh, fade the particles that are about to die up here. Let's try to fade them to the background. So first let's add a new material and set it to a halo. Mm. And you might want to notice that uh, the alpha is 1 here, and the color is, let's make it pure white. So now we know what we have to do uh, in order to mix the right colors, and in what way we want to mix them, to make, for example, the alpha to 0. Next, let's add a texture, and now we want to use a blend texture and you'll see why in just a second. So the main thing is, uh, if you really want to use the new feature, is to change the uh, texture coordinates to the strand or particle coordinates from the default generated coordinates. And what this does for normal particles is it uses the x-axis value for the lifetime of the particle. So we should see that straight away, if we render it, we have some color. And why this happens, it's all pink, is that uh, this uh, grayscale texture currently, so it uses the color given here to apply the uh, texture. But we can override that by using a ramp, and we also since the mixing isn't really working uh, for that well, so we'll change it to multiply. And for now let's set the alpha to 1 so we can actually see what the texture does. So it starts out black and then it turns into white. And let's see how that looks. Yay, it works! So this is a really nice way to actually see how the particle colors will change in time. So this edge here, the beginning, is the part where the particle is born. And the end part here, on the very right, is when the particle is going to die. So now we can just, for example, take this point and change its alpha to zero. And then we also want to influence the alpha here and then just render and they fade away nicely. Now to make it a bit for example more fire like let's set something grey here and for example make it red in the middle part and let's make it pure white In the very beginning. Perhaps let's add some yellow here too. A bit brighter. Okay, and then let's make it use the add value. And there you have it. Okay, perhaps we should decrease the overall alpha a little bit. Okay, I'm no artist, but you get the idea. It's really nice because you can actually see what happens. The particle colors really look like the ramp here. So that's basically the idea for uh, the uh, lifetime coordinate, which is on the x-axis. This is why we use the, a horizontal blend file 
blend texture, sorry. So another feature with the texture coordinates is if we add some uh, trails to the particles. Let's set the length to something a little bit smaller. Yep. So now the y-axis can be used to set a texture along the trails. I might also want to put the size down to a little bit lower, something like that, because we have now a lot of lot, a lot more particles here due to the trails. So now, if we render it using a horizontal texture, we simply get uh, the particle color from the lifetime. But if we use a vertical texture, uh, the ramp applies to the actual length of the trail. So now each and every trail starts off uh, white from bottom here, where the actual particle is, and the trail slowly turns into these colors that are higher and higher. And what's great about this is that you can of course apply however many textures you want and stack them and layer just like normal textures. So the only thing to remember is that with the particle coordinates x-axis is for the lifetime and the y-axis is for the trail coordinates. Okay, thanks for watching and hope you have a nice time playing with this new feature. Bye-bye.